Have you ever wondered why volcanoes erupt, spewing out molten lava and ash and causing such widespread destruction? Volcanoes, the fiery mountains of the earth, have long been a source of intrigue and fear. They're not just natural disasters waiting to happen, but also a crucial part of our planet's geology, playing a significant role in shaping the very landscapes we call home. Picture this. Deep beneath the Earth's surface, hidden from the naked eye, molten rock or magma is constantly on the move. When conditions are just right, this magma finds a way to the surface, resulting in a spectacular display of Earth's raw power, a volcanic eruption. Volcanoes come in all shapes and sizes. Some are towering stratovolcanoes like Mount Fuji in Japan or Mount St. Helens in the United States. These are formed by layers of hardened lava, pumice, and volcanic ash. Then we have shield volcanoes like Mauna Loa in Hawaii, which are characterized by their broad, shield-like shape and gentle slopes formed by the slow accumulation of highly fluid lava flows. Volcanoes can also be found in the most unexpected of places. While they're most commonly associated with land, the reality is that the majority of the world's volcanoes are actually underwater, hidden beneath the ocean's surface. These submarine volcanoes, such as those found along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, contribute significantly to the planet's volcanic activity. But volcanoes aren't just geological phenomena. They've had a profound impact on human civilization. From Pompeii, the Roman city buried under ash and pumice from Mount Vesuvius's eruption in 79 AD to the recent eruptions in Iceland and the Philippines, these fiery mountains have shaped our history, culture, and even our climate. Now you may be wondering, what causes these fiery mountains to erupt? Let's delve deeper into the science behind volcanic eruptions. A volcano is more than just a mountain. It's a complex system with numerous parts, each playing a crucial role in an eruption. Let's start from the bottom, deep beneath the Earth's crust where we find the magma chamber. This is a large pool of molten rock or magma under immense pressure. This magma is a hot mixture of molten rock, dissolved gases, and water from the mantle. When conditions are just right, the magma begins its journey to the surface. The magma travels up through a conduit, a kind of pipe or tunnel that connects the magma chamber to the Earth's surface. This conduit is often lined with solidified magma from previous eruptions, which can form a kind of natural insulation, keeping the magma hot and fluid on its ascent. The magma's journey ends at the volcano's vent, a kind of doorway or exit point from the conduit to the outside world. The vent is where the magic happens, or rather the eruption. The vent can be a single spot on the volcano's surface, or it can be a series of cracks or fissures, depending on the type of volcano and the nature of the eruption. The final part of our volcanic anatomy lesson is the crater. This is the bowl-shaped depression or hollow at the top of the volcano, formed by the explosive force of the eruption. Some craters can be miles wide, a testament to the immense power of volcanic eruptions. After the eruption, the crater often fills with lava, ash, and other volcanic material, creating a new layer in the volcano's geological history. Each part of a volcano plays its role in the spectacle of an eruption. From the magma chamber's pressure cooker conditions, to the conduit's insulated pathway, the vent's explosive exit, and the crater's dramatic finale, every element contributes to the volcano's performance. Understanding the structure of a volcano is key to comprehending why they erupt but what triggers the eruption in the first place. The eruption of a volcano is a powerful display of the Earth's geothermal energy. But what exactly triggers it? The answer lies beneath the Earth's crust, in the hot molten rock we know as magma. Magma forms when the Earth's mantle melts, a process driven by heat from the Earth's core and the decay of radioactive elements. Now imagine this magma as a fizzy soft drink. When the bottle stays closed, the gas remains dissolved in the drink under pressure. But when you open the bottle, the pressure is released and the gas escapes, causing the drink to fizz up. Similarly, when magma rises towards the Earth's surface, the pressure decreases and the dissolved gases form bubbles. These bubbles expand and cause the magma to explode out of the volcano, resulting in an eruption. But what causes this magma to rise in the first place? The answer is found in the movement of tectonic plates. The Earth's crust is broken into several large pieces, known as tectonic plates. These plates float on the semi-fluid layer of the mantle beneath them, constantly moving and interacting with each other. When two plates collide, one often gets pushed beneath the other in a process called subduction. This subducted plate heats up as it sinks into the mantle, eventually melting to form magma. The newly formed magma is less dense than the surrounding rock, so it begins to rise, setting the stage for a potential volcanic eruption.
However, not all eruptions are alike. Sometimes the magma rises slowly, allowing gases to escape gradually. In such cases, the magma may simply ooze out of the volcano, creating a slow, non-explosive eruption. At other times, the magma rises quickly, trapping the gases inside. The resulting pressure buildup can lead to a violent, explosive eruption. So, the rise of magma and pressure buildup triggers an eruption. But why does this process occur more frequently in certain parts of the world? Well, that's a tale for another scene where we'll dive into the ring of fire and other volcanic hotspots. Stay tuned. Scene script. Ever heard of the ring of fire? It's not just a catchy song title, but also a major area in the basin of the Pacific Ocean, where a large number of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur. Now, let's dive a little deeper. The Ring of Fire is a direct result of plate tectonics and the movement and collisions of lithospheric plates. These plates, which constitute the Earth's crust, are constantly moving, albeit at a pace slower than a snail's. But when they collide or slide past each other, the resultant friction often triggers earthquakes and volcanic activity. This is precisely what happens in the Ring of Fire, which is home to 75% of the world's active volcanoes and 90% of the world's earthquakes. The Ring of Fire isn't the only volcanic hotspot on Earth, though. There are others scattered across the globe. For instance, there's the East African Rift Valley, a continental rift zone where the African plate is in the process of splitting into two tectonic plates. This splitting action results in significant volcanic activity. Then there's the well-known Yellowstone Hotspot in the United States, located at Yellowstone National Park. This location is famous for its geysers and hot springs, but they are just surface manifestations of the intense volcanic activity happening deep beneath the park. Another notable hotspot is the island of Iceland, positioned on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This ridge is a divergent tectonic plate boundary located along the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. Here, the Eurasian Plate and the North American Plate are moving away from each other, leading to frequent volcanic eruptions. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean, the Hawaiian hotspot is a prime example of a volcanic region located in the interior of a tectonic plate, away from plate boundaries. This hotspot is responsible for the creation of the Hawaiian Islands. These hotspots are fascinating, but they also pose significant risks. What happens when a volcano erupts? Volcanic eruptions can be awe-inspiring and terrifying at the same time. They can have both immediate and long-term effects. But what are these effects exactly? Let's start with the immediate ones. We've all seen the dramatic images of lava flows, rivers of molten rock that ooze down the slopes of a volcano, but did you know lava can reach temperatures of up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit? This intense heat can incinerate anything in its path, causing widespread destruction. Then there are the ash clouds. These towering plumes can reach heights of up to 17 miles and spread over hundreds of miles. They can create darkness during the daytime, cause buildings to collapse under their weight, and even bring down airplanes. But perhaps the most terrifying immediate effect is the pyroclastic flow. This fast-moving current of hot gas and volcanic matter can travel at speeds of up to 450 miles per hour, obliterating everything in its path. Now let's move on to the long-term effects. Volcanic eruptions can dramatically alter landscapes, creating new landforms and changing the course of rivers. They can also bury entire cities like Pompeii, preserving them for centuries under layers of ash. But the effects aren't just localized. Large eruptions can have global impacts too. The ash and sulfur dioxide released can reach the upper atmosphere, where they reflect sunlight back into space. This can cause a drop in global temperatures and alter weather patterns, sometimes for several years. Volcanic eruptions also play a key role in the carbon cycle. They release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which can contribute to global warming. But over millions of years, this carbon gets locked away in rocks, helping to regulate the Earth's climate. Volcanoes can certainly be destructive, but did you know they also play a crucial role in shaping our world? Their eruptions remind us of the dynamic and ever-changing nature of our planet, a force of nature that is as fascinating as it is formidable. While volcanoes are often associated with destruction, they also play a vital role in shaping our planet's landscape and atmosphere. Volcanoes, the fiery giants that they are, are architects of new lands. When a volcanic eruption occurs, the molten rock or magma is expelled from the Earth's crust. This magma, once it cools down and solidifies, forms new landmasses. Over time, these landmasses can grow large enough to form islands. The Hawaiian Islands, for instance, are a product of this volcanic activity. 
But the role of volcanoes in Earth's evolution goes beyond just land formation. The release of gases during volcanic eruptions has significantly influenced the composition of our planet's atmosphere. When magma rises from the deep earth to the surface, it carries with it gases trapped in the molten rock. As the magma erupts, these gases are released into the atmosphere. What's fascinating is that these gases include water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide, all of which play a critical role in Earth's climate. For instance, carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, contributes to the warming of our planet. Meanwhile, sulfur dioxide can form tiny droplets in the atmosphere, which reflect sunlight back into space, causing a cooling effect. Volcanic eruptions have also been responsible for some of the most significant climate changes in Earth's history. The release of large amounts of sulfur dioxide during massive eruptions can lead to what scientists call volcanic winters, where the global temperature drops due to the reflected sunlight. So, while we often view volcanoes as harbingers of destruction, we must also recognize their role in creating new land and shaping our atmosphere. They have been instrumental in creating the Earth as we know it today. They have sculpted our landscapes, influenced our climate, and even contributed to the evolution of life by providing nutrients to our soils. Volcanoes, with their destructive power and creative force, truly are a testament to the dynamic nature of our planet. Despite our understanding of volcanoes, they continue to be a source of mystery and fascination. Over the centuries, our knowledge of these fiery giants has grown exponentially, yet they remain enigmatic, unpredictable, and enthralling. Today, scientists across the globe are working tirelessly to decode the secrets of volcanic activity. Their research is driven by a thirst for knowledge and the urgent need to predict eruptions, potentially saving countless lives and entire ecosystems. It's a complex puzzle with pieces that span geology, chemistry, and physics scattered across time and space. One of the most critical areas of investigation is seismic activity. Tremors and earthquakes often precede volcanic eruptions, providing valuable clues about what's brewing beneath the surface. By monitoring these seismic signals, Scientists hope to forecast eruptions with greater accuracy. Yet, the relationship between seismic activity and eruptions is not fully understood, and it's one of the many mysteries still to be unraveled. Another focus of ongoing research is the composition of volcanic gases. These gases released during eruptions provide crucial insights into the inner workings of volcanoes. By analyzing these gases, researchers can infer the magma's depth, temperature, and even the likelihood of an impending eruption. However, the precise links between gas emission and volcanic activity remain elusive, adding another layer to the enigma. And then, there's the study of volcanic lightning, a spectacular yet poorly understood phenomenon. This lightning, generated within the volcanic plume, may hold keys to understanding eruption dynamics. Yet, it remains largely a mystery, a striking symbol of our incomplete knowledge. In the grand scheme of Earth's history, our understanding of volcanoes is still in its infancy. But every eruption, every tremor, every puff of volcanic gas brings us one step closer to unraveling the mystery of these fiery giants. Our journey of discovery is far from over. In many ways, it's just beginning. It's a journey driven by curiosity, by the desire to understand our planet better, and by the hope of safeguarding our future against nature's fury. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel. This will encourage us to bring you more videos like this. Thank you.